This is the Cool Photo Tools Podcast, episode number 65, May 2nd, 2016. Are you sick of trying to learn all the new photo software? Are you tired of hearing about the next big thing in photography? Well, neither are we. Welcome to Cool Photo Tools with Jay Beerstorff and Rhonda Spencer. Today's sponsor is Audible.com, who has more than 180,000 audiobooks and spoken word audio products. Get a free audiobook of your choice at www.audibletrial.com slash coolphototools. Good morning, cool heads. Welcome to the day after May Day. Did everybody get a May basket that. for uh, for May Day? Remember I know I didn't, but uh, that doesn't mean you didn't. We don't do the Maypole things that other places do. You'd have to do like a Maypole around the cactus. Rhonda Spencer. Hello. Hello. Hanging out Hello. in the back of the studio. In the back of the studio, I'm here. Crawling out from under the table. <laughs> well, I was not under the table. I was slumped in my chair. Oh. <laughs> Falling asleep in her chair, <laughs> waiting for the coffee pot to get done. That's right. I'm right. here. I'm well, here. Welcome back. Welcome back. We've got we've got a bunch of stuff. We, we just you know we've had this stuff on the list for weeks, and I, we just can't get through it. Oh, that's There's true. Just too, we have to talk faster, that. or talk about less stuff, or talk uh, in less detail, or something well, about n- that. All right, none of the above is happening. All right. So, so one of the things that's that's been on my list, and mm-hmm. I just can't seem to get to it. Okay. Is, uh, is this? There's a new lens that's out. Okay. Um, you know, and it's. Um, uh, uh, let's see if I can find the switcher here. There it is. Okay. So. Oh, I was going to yeah. talk about that. I, that uh, now, was see, on I my beat list. You, to it. you did. Oh yeah, look, Doggone. it's on Rhonda's screen too. It is. Yeah, we can just go back and forth with that. Okay. It is. So yeah, this this is the 15 millimeter. This is the Irix lens. Well, you go ahead and talk about it. Well, 15 millimeter, 2.4. Um, I find it, it looks like it's going to be a really great wide-angle lens. Manual focus again. What? Well, I guess with a wide-angle, you wouldn't. doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't. You have so much built-in depth of field. You do, which is really great. Um, kind of reminds me of my new macro, the wide-angle macro 15 millimeter that uh, from, um, thank you very much. From the company that I can't say the name. Lawa, yeah. which we, Lawa. Venus, Venus Lens. Right. And do, do, is this one made by them, or do they have another one, too, that we haven't talked about? Um, you mean, is this lens made by Venus Lens, or does Venus Lens have other lenses? Uh, it seems like there's a, there's a Venus Lens that's, uh, let me look at oh, my Oh, there is. Venus here. Lens has a couple of different lenses. I'll find it here. Keep but talking. This company, uh, these guys are new, too. And I think this is the only lens that they've got out, isn't it, Jay? Uh, I don't think they have any other. Lenses. Oh, okay. I know. I know which one I'm thinking of is the is the Boca lens from um, from Venus lens, which is 105 millimeter f2. Right. I'll talk about that one next. Yeah. So that's where I got confused. There's just so many so many lenses, so little time. That's it. But this looks like a very interesting lens. A, yeah. little, a little bit more expensive than the Venus lens is, though. So you know, what's this one going to cost? This yeah. one's going to cost. Let me get up and look. Cause I, ah, see, I, I always stump her I, with that one, don't well, I? No, no, because yeah. it's always written on my notes. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I always, I always. I'm gonna, he's really going to get this, you know. I always stump her with that. She's like, oh, like, I got to go back to my notes. Like, I have no idea like, what that costs. I, well, because, nobody's going to ask me that, especially Jay. <laughs> You know, I know you're going to ask me. That's why I actually write it onto my notes. It was like seven hundred dollars. Okay, which I was. So yeah, for, okay, okay. The Blackstone is going to be seven eighty, and the Firefly is six hundred. And the difference between the two? Um, it looked like to me the difference between the two. Um, one is going to have more waterproofing than the other. Okay, is what it really looked but like. But they're both fifteen millimeter. They're both fifteen yeah, millimeter f two fours. So this. Uh, Hmm. That's a lot cheaper than the uh, uh, Canon's uh, zoom that they have, which is... Uh, it is. What is that one? But This is going to be made in the, all mounts. The uh, Pentax. The and, Venus lens is what, 479 Yeah, so, well, so. but that's a... Com- um, oh, you're talking about the... Their, that's a 14 millimeter? Is that no, the No, it's a 15. Oh, it's a 15 as well. It's a 15. Okay. 
Yeah. And it does great it does great wide angle shots. I mean they they tout it as a macro wide angle, but it does actual just great. And again, it's a manual lens, so it takes a little bit of learning. Okay, so this is the one I was talking about. This is the the Laua or the Venus 105 F2. And the, the thing that's that's interesting about come back here find the right screen. The thing that's kind of interesting about this lens is, uh, this of course is going to be for Nikon, Canon, Sony, Pentax, uh, is that, and it's around 700 bucks. For a 105, it's got uh, a special element so that uh, it makes the background out of focus in an attractive manner, which is what they call bokeh, B-O-K-E-H, which is an attractive out of focus uh, background area. And so this lens is actually designed uh, to do that, uh, set up in, in such a way that and this could be supposed to be a portrait lens. You'd mm-hmm. be like a head and shoulders type portrait. And uh, let's see if there's any. Um, do they have any pictures here? That they've done with the 105. Yeah. Is this one available, or is it still on uh, a it's, slow boat it's, to China? It's uh, not available yet. It is coming. It's called the the uh, the Boca Dreamer Smooth Trans Focus. Lens. There's a little better picture of it for those. It of you looks there. like it, well, I, if it's like the other Venus lens, it's very soundly built. I was very very impressed with how well that lens was built. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so just just to, to refresh you on that, the Venus 15 millimeters in f4. Oh, it's a, is it an f4? But yep, yeah, f4 says right there on their website. And so then then the other one is uh, a 2.4 is a 2.4. So it's like a, almost a, more than a stop. Um, I didn't realize brighter. it was an F4. Mm-hmm. Which is fine for a, for most things, for landscape mm-hmm. stuff, who cares? Um, mm-hmm. you know, and especially with the ISO on the cameras that are getting so um, uh, so high, much higher and improved. Anyway, so just just a couple new lenses coming out there. kind of. Uh, I still want their flexible macro twin flash. And is there a picture of that? There is. Oh, we'll Switch click it on over. and I'll put it over on, on screen okay. there. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. The, it uh, does. If you've got macro work, it's these little flash unit with these uh, oh. uh, two heads that uh, can be moved and around. And a spotter scope. And a little... Spotter light so that you... Oh, a little, a little highlight thing. So it's like three mm-hmm. flash heads. Tiny flash heads that can be arranged. Kind of looks like a squid. When you're taking bug pictures. And but uh, anybody who's had really tight... Well, and, and with this lens... Um, with their 15 millimeter macro, this would be extremely helpful because literally you can you can focus touching the front element of the glass with that lens, and so consequently light falls off really quickly. It's hard to get enough light when you're that close, um, and this would really help because you can you can put this right in front of the lens. I th- yeah, I I do think that this would be a cool. How much does that cost? Uh, I think it's two seventy nine. Okay, that's. I mean, everything's three hundred bucks. I guess it's just a handy number. You know. I guess it is. It's all about three hundred bucks. But let's see. For those of you that haven't ever seen this, let me see if they've got any images on this macro lens because. It has such a unique look. Okay. While you're looking for that, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hijack it real quick and right. go to the uh, uh, Popular Photography has uh, announced, um, uh, well, they have helped announce, the Profoto OCF Beauty Dish. Oh. And this is, if you know, if you have a, uh, um, I, I've seen these at the shows. A couple of different companies make these. And they're uh, kind of a, it looks like a, re- they're like an umbrella, but they kind of fold up a little bit different. So instead of having a big polished bowl uh, that you would use as a reflector for your studio lights, these uh, are collapsible and they and they spring back out, kind of like a like an umbrella. And this one is white on the inside and has a little diffuser. So it grid springs right. out. Yeah, it's designed to be to travel. And you know, if you're going to take your studio lights with you, you can fold your reflectors up um, and take them as well. I, the difference between this and a white umbrella. I think it'd be you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference, but nonetheless, it's a little inter- innovative design here, and this is from Pro Pro Photo. It's the OCF Beauty Dish. 
All right, did you find that yet? I did. Oh, you did. Let me, okay, let, let me, me go back to your screen here. All right, Rhonda's got some pictures that were taken with yeah, this uh, with this lens, the, which, the Laowa, the Venus lens, which is the 15 millimeter and also a macro lens, mm -hmm. which so is just wacky. This is showing it in macro, but this is what makes this lens so unique is usually when you have shot a macro and you're this close, um, all your background is going to be out of focus. Yeah. And as you see, it holds somewhat the focus of the background. Yeah, so we're looking at a picture of a little frog. Can't tell exactly mm -hmm. how big that frog is. On a branch, and he's uh, he's about a, a third of the frame. And then in the background, you know, some uh, hundreds of feet away, we can still see there are, are houses or buildings. buildings back there which are they're not sharp focus no but they're they're sharp enough that you can easily recognize well i'm giving you an idea on this one this is another picture this is a picture of a chick a um, baby chick like a, a chicken chick like a chicken chick that doesn't sound right jay so it's, you shouldn't a, say it's a chicken, chicken. chick when you yeah. say it, it comes out almost wrong okay um but again showing you how wide this is you can see his hand up here is yeah, actually the photographer's in the, hand the is hand in the frame. Is in and, the frame because that's how wide. It might not be the photographer. It might be the chick handler. Uh, either that or maybe a light holder. But anyway, yeah. when when it's this close to the camera, um, if you had a normal flash, you'd fall off way behind it. So you need something that's going to put flash really close to that front element of the glass. Yeah, it's a very distinctive look. Uh huh. Um, on that, uh, for sure. The lens just has a, a unique look, but it is a manual focus lens. It is a manual focus and lens. It's about was, was it seven hundred bucks, something like that? Um, no, I think it's about four, four seventy something, about five so hundred bucks. Okay. Yeah, yeah five hundred bucks. We'll link to that in the show notes, so you can take a look at that. Uh, one thing that also that we hadn't talked about that uh, is coming up. Uh, again next year, and we just we just were at it last year. Rhonda finally talked me into uh, going to this uh, mm -hmm. this year, which is the Wild Wild West Steampunk Convention. It was a blast. And this is uh, their website here at, at wildwestcon.com. And this is the, uh, uh, if, if you're into to steampunk or uh, cosplay or... Or just like photographing people. You like to photograph people that, that are, are in these crazy costumes and like to uh, be photographed, then uh, this is the place to go. This happens at the old Tucson, which is right here in, in Tucson. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, uh, there's, they have a, the convention comes in and they have special events for the convention goers. And they have a whole section of people that uh, uh, sell uh, crafts and costumes and things related to the steampunk. And so that's, um, that's something that uh, next year it's in March. I don't know that they come up with an, a new date yet on it. But uh, definitely want to take, check that out. Oh, it and, was so much fun. Yeah, Rhonda and I took some some pictures. And, and you know what? I, I wished I had gone Saturday instead of just Sunday. Yeah. Um, because I understand that it was a little more uh, more things to shoot. And I wished I'd, I'd come, you know, more prepared to, to photograph and uh, not drag people that, you know, were just there for a good time and, <laughs> and just wanted to see stuff. Just, just come to shoot and work, you know, because <laughs> there was so much opportunity to take some really interesting pictures there. The Wild West. My favorite con. lens to shoot with out there is the seventy two hundred. So if you have yeah. that version of that lens going out there, something in that within that kind of yeah. And I think the seventy to two hundred f two eight, even mm -hmm. though it's a little heavier, I think mm -hmm. that would be. I wish I'd have brought that lens with me, but I didn't. Yeah. Still got some good shots. But, oh yeah, uh, it was fun. And we'll, like well I maybe said. we'll if I well, think about it, I'll I'll put a few of those as a credits roll out of here, and we might take a look at those. The best part of it is that most of us that like to shoot people um, don't get that opportunity. Yeah, it's it's different than street photography mm -hmm. where you're maybe you're being candid. You don't want people to know that you're taking pictures. In this case, it's totally upfront. You know, people are like, yeah, take my picture because yep. I spent a thousand bucks on this costume and it's awesome. So I just walk up and it's like, hey, can we take your picture? Yeah, okay, come over here and stand here and do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of Definitely fun. Definitely recommend that, especially if you have some kind of an event like that in your community or or whatnot. Yep. Um, check that out at the Wild West Con. All right. I got one more thing okay. before I turn it over to you because right. I'm on a roll here. Okay, jump on okay. it. Because I keep forgetting to talk about this too. Okay, it's all about okay. you. All right, so this is, there is a, 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 a Photoshop filter, a plugin, that has been around since 2007, I'm thinking, somewhere, does that sound right? And this is, um, the filter is called 
Lucis, L-U-C-I-S, and maybe I'm not pronouncing it right. Could be Lucas. Uh, could be Lucis. I don't know. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm I'm surprised. I usually know most filters and stuff. I have never heard of this one. Really? Okay, this is uh-huh. a classic. This is this has kind of started the the contrast um, rage. You know, the clarity, mm-hmm. um, uh, the micro micro contrast, that whole kind of stuff. This really was um, started it off. So you have this these micro contrast. Effects here. Let's see if I can find. How much is this? Um, well, this is this. I'm getting to that. You're getting ahead of me. Here. <laughs> well, you always ask me that question. I'm curious. Yeah, I have the answer, ones. but I'm I'm holding it. Okay. So that people keep listening to the podcast. Okay. <laughs> He's dangling it in yeah. front of you. So look at some of these effects. If you're watching the video version, um, this is kind of a typical effect that uh, that it created. And since then, Topaz and some other companies have uh, have created similar filters, uh, Photoshop plugins to give some of these, these contrast or HDR kind of effects, but they're not really HDR because you don't, you only need one frame to do it. So these, um, uh, effects mm-hmm. were expensive when you, they first came out with these back in 2007, they had a couple different versions of the filter. The basic one I think was like 180 bucks. It was something like that. And then they came out with a pro version and it was like 300 bucks. And then they got worried about uh, piracy. And so then they, they made it so they had to run it with a dongle, which is a, what? a, it's a USB thing that you have to stick in your computer or the software won't run. Okay, uh, and those were, yeah. So they were really, you know, kind of paranoid about all that. And uh, so now they have announced that they're, their, pro, their latest and greatest, and this is for Windows uh, users or Mac users, their latest version of the software is now 30 bucks. Hmm. So, and for 30 bucks, it's really, this is a steal. You know, this, this has been one that's been often uh, imitated, but rarely duplicated. Is it a standalone program? Uh, the, the version that's coming out will be. This one, you still need Photoshop or Photoshop uh, elements or some compatible type program to uh, to work with it. But they are coming out with a standalone version. So if you buy the $30 one now, they will give you the standalone as soon as it's available. And I'm not sure exactly when that's coming out. But nonetheless, if you have if you have Photoshop or one of these uh, type of uh, programs, you know, to use this with, mm-hmm. highly recommend this. Uh, there is a... Um, I just discovered a use for it myself. There's there's a slide. It's very simple. It's like two. There's two sliders in it, so it's really easy to control. But one use that uh, yeah, that's that's kind of a typical look for it. Mm-hmm. That that uh, HDR contrasty look. The one of the things that I discovered a use for is uh, you know when we're at the desert museum, sometimes the uh, the the critters will be close to the fencing. You know, they'll be yes. they'll be netting or whatnot, particularly in the background. And sometimes you can't quite get it out of focus because the critter that you're you're taking the picture of is too close to it. So what I just used this one, and you were talking about this picture I just did of the wolf. Mm-hmm. The Invisinet was a little close, or the the fencing material that they use was a little close to the uh, to the camera. I couldn't get it all the way out of focus. So I used the uh, the Lucis Pro plugin, and it's got a setting where you can uh, you, you move the, the slider to the left, and it kind of simplifies or knocks down detail in large areas. Interesting. And so, and but it doesn't knock down the edge detail of the subject. So it's very easy to to make two images, blur the background with one, and then use a mask to bring the subject back in. It doesn't have to be a an exact mask. It mm-hmm. can be it can be kind of close and and not real critical to do. So very fast to do. And I'll, uh, I'll slide that picture in here uh, when, we, uh, when we edit this so you can take a look at the before and afters of that. Um, so anyway, this, this is something you should try. And they, they do have a trial version of this if you want to check it out. But it's really cool. 30 bucks, no yeah, brainer. that is good. If you, if you like these kind of effects at all, you should be, uh, you should be looking at this. This is the program or the, or the plugin that really started this whole genre Hmm. Of effects, so and that and at that price, yeah, you should have it. So, all right, Rhonda, I'm done. Your turn. Okay. Um, going back to Topaz, they were just this was just recently on sale, which is too bad because they had it up for forty. Well, actually, bucks. when this podcast, it's been a long time ago yeah. now. So yeah, but it comes up, it comes up occasionally. So if you know if your money's tight right now, get on their mailing list, and they they do they put on 
stuff on sale time to time. I don't think there's any denoise program that beats Topaz's. Yeah, they're pretty smoking. Oh my goodness, yeah. I mean, when you look how grainy this picture is, and it, they, it, they just do amazing. And as we all know, you know, there is times that you have a noisy image that so we just can't. When you're shooting at high ISO, yeah. uh, you'll Low get... Low light. When we say noise, it's if you look at, uh, at the full-size resolution of your images, it looks like little grains of sand, yeah. kind of multicolored uh, grains. It, and we used to call it, uh, you know, grainy when we had yeah. film. But it's kind of the same problem. It's it, what we call it noise because we're shooting digital. Yes. And... It definitely, you can have a great shot that's ruined from noise. Yeah. So besides just taking the, the noise out, it kind of tries to hold the details and sharpen mm -hmm. the edges. This is for sure, the, I think this is the, the it, most industrial, heavy-duty noise removal program it's, that's it's on amazing. the market. It's amazing. Yeah. If you were going to buy any noise removal program, this is the one for you to get. I have it at home. I love it. I think it's great. Because as we know with some of the newer cameras and the higher ISOs, sometimes you can't get away from it. You shoot at night, there's sometimes you're going to get that nasty little grainy look, and this just it just gets rid of it. And you can get this from topazlabs.com. Mm -hmm. We'll link to that in the show notes. And like I said, keep an eye on it because it does go on sale. Mm -hmm. You know, I think 79 may be a little steep. But when they put it on sale and go, I to don't know if you needed it. Oh, it'd, that's it'd true. Be worth anything. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. If you had a picture that you needed to be published and it was just too noisy, that would definitely be the way to go. So do you ever have to transport your gear? Do you have to, you got a bunch of stuff, you know, that I know, try, try to travel light. You try to get to know what you're going to need and just take those things that, that you're going to use for that job or that assignment. Oh. But sometimes you have to take a bunch of stuff. Yeah, there is times that I take a bunch of stuff. Well, one of the cool things that, that is on the market for photographers or and back in the day when I used to be a musician uh, these were also awesome and this is um, the rock and roller multi-cart right on you have one of these don't you yeah our the r16rt ground glider and this is we're looking at this on the Amazon page and they make different models of these uh, and this this particular model is like 270 bucks but these are crazy in that they uh, they collapse. They are kind of like a hand truck, but they'll they'll they're much more versatile because they've got four wheels. You can use them like a hand truck. They just uh, kind of um, transform into any uh, position that you might need or that is handy if you have to move equipment from the car to a location. These are awesome. If you got a ton of stuff, you'll just you could just break your back trying to pack that stuff back and forth. And these are so slick and so nice to use. Rock and Roller Multi Cart, and that's uh, we'll link to that on Amazon. So, uh, okay, we'll highly talk recommend that for you if you got to move stuff. You're talking about when you're having to move stuff. Well, there's times that Rhonda does wedding photography. No, yes, really, yes, and when she does, you have to move a lot of stuff. I have to end up a lot of times. I'll take three bodies, you know, three lenses. Bodies, yeah. Not oh, oh, you mean camera, camera bodies? bodies. Oh. Yes, thank you. Um, I'll take in three camera bodies. I'll take in multiple lenses. Um, a lot of times I, I bring in a second shooter. So I have, uh, I have just a ton of gear that I have to carry. Um, I, I own this think tank. This is the think, think tank security. That's easy for you to say. I know it is an amazing piece of luggage because, um, it looks like a piece of luggage. There's the one thing. Um, a lot of times if you're having a big camera bag, it makes it more noticeable. This looks like a piece of luggage, less likely that someone's going to try to rip you off. Also, um, the security ones come small enough that you can use it as a carry-on going on to a plane so that you're not having to trust your roll away going to. Yeah, I wouldn't put yeah. 5,000 bucks worth of photo gear in the. Yeah, and have it, it <laughs> have it stowed, yes. Yeah. Watch them bounce it off of the floor. Yeah, that's scary. Um, it carries, like I said, a ton of gear. Okay. There, there's the inside of it. You can do all sorts of stuff. It has locks. It has actually, in fact, I don't see that they show it. The It has uh, security locks so that you can take it and tether it. It locks here 
has locks here, but it also up here has um, an actual metal cord that you can wrap around something and tether it. It's not a cheap date, as you see, 400 some odd dollars. No, well, you got but five or ten thousand dollars worth of photo gear in it. That's right. It's no big deal. And it's handy. You can roll it around. It's great. Love it. So for those of you that shoot cameras, they have uh, weddings. There, that's, and you can get that at thinktankphoto.com. Mm -hmm. And I think you can also probably get yeah, from B and H and all. Photo yeah, everybody's going to carry it and anymore. Adorama, mm -hmm. probably Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those places. Yeah. All right. So here's a, here's another photo editor. But we're, you know, we're just being deluged with photo editors. I think I think Adobe, since they went to their subscription model, is kind of a moving target at this point for for people mm -hmm. to go in and take a big piece of their pie. And there's a company. This is this was from the TechRadar.com website, and this is Serif. They have a uh, a photo editing program which is highly highly rated on the Mac side called Affinity Photo. Mm -hmm. And they have just I announced... I heard of something with that. Okay. And they just announced that they're coming out with a Windows version. So they'll be, you'll be able to, to get this for everybody. And this, uh, and they're also saying that if you want, if you're a Windows user, user and you want to be on their beta program, uh, we'll put the link uh, to sign up there in the show what notes. Other, what other software did they have besides this? Uh, Serif, they make a bunch of like desktop publishing uh, uh, type. Uh, they make a bunch of stuff. They've been around a while. Serif, yeah. Yeah, because I've heard of the Affinity program. Have you ever tried it? I haven't because it's Mac only. Uh, that's moment, true. So. We're, we hate to say it. We both have Windows. Well, you know. But that's how it is. Yeah, you know, it's it's anything that's that's good on one platform will make it to the other that's eventually. Very so. true. Very, yeah, so. very true. And you got to stop. You got to make a decision. You know, you just have to draw a line in the sand and go. I'm gonna I'm gonna go this way or I'm gonna go that way. And you know, it's, yeah. It's just it's just a matter of you should have you should own whatever your friends own because if you need help <laughs> then they can help you so uh, so that's my opinion on that. What you got next, Rhonda? Oh, I was looking at this light meter. I was just watching a video of a, a gentleman. A light meter? Aren't don't cameras have built-in light meters they now? They do, they do. But there's still lots of people that are old school that use regular light meters. Do you own a light meter, Jay? Nope. Nope. I got a flash meter. Does that count? No. <laughs> would you own a light meter i used to own light meters yeah. but um uh, yeah actually my flash meter can do ambient light mm -hmm. if i needed it but i i rarely find use for it this is an all-around i think it would be interesting i would like to at least have one to play with to see what i think and this one is only three hundred ninety nine dollars on amazon yeah. this is the new Siconic l478 dr Dash U light meter. <laughs> I love the little little bitty catch names that they have that you're just automatically going to remember every time. I think we need to start a a, a database where everything that has a, a big model number like that on, we just give it a, a one word name. Yeah, you know, and you can so, uh, and we can make it like industry standard. So it doesn't matter what the manufacturer says. That everybody that wants to use this product, this is now referred to as the Siconic Zippy or the. Amazing light. <laughs> no, Amazing too many, light. Too many meter. words. Just one okay. word. The zippy. Yeah, the zip, the zippy. <laughs> I like it. You know, it's catchy. Like, what kind of light meter do you use? I, I use the zippy. The Sakonic zippy. The zippy. You know, yeah. Back when marketing, you know, was just, we used to have just uh, simple, catchy names, you know, I mean, that's. Well, that you remembered. Yep. But I, I think I would. It, does anybody actually rent light meters that you can? Yeah, you can they? get them from Borrow Lenses and LensRentals.com. I think I would like to, and, to uh, rent one just to play with, just to see. And you know, there are there are some uh, light meter apps for your phone. There are, but I'd like to get wildly inaccurate results. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd like to have really a good light meter in my hand. Okay, so back to, in the day, back mm -hmm. before you were born, when uh -huh. I was when I was working in a studio in California, <laughs> there was. Um, you know, we used to have, we had light meters, tell who done it. Mm -hmm. We had the Goss and Luna Pros and all these light meters, and we had flash meters too. And ultimately, you could use a meter all day long. Mm -hmm. And and then, when it was something important, you would take a test shot with a Polaroid mm -hmm. piece of film. We had, the pro cameras we had, had you would take the, the film back off, you'd put the Polaroid back on, you know, and then you would take one of the the sheet Polaroid films and take a shot with the Polaroid. 
And then you'd look at that because we didn't have LCDs, you know, we right. didn't have any, any way to display. And so that, the Polaroid, you know, would tell you, you could see lighting ratios, you could see, you could visualize in a way that the light meter couldn't show you. Right. You know, like, oh, look, it's really, there's a shadow over there. I didn't see that. So that was a really valuable tool that we used back before there were digital images. So, you know, light meters, yeah, for certain situations, you know, they are useful. But I think uh, if you shoot in the raw format, if you have a histogram displayed on your viewfinder, and you know your way around the new Google Nick filters, particularly Viviza, mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to handle most any of those situations. But that's probably just me. I know. Like I said, I still like to play with one, just because I haven't ever done it before. Okay, I think you should. I, I think th I should. Know, yeah, I think that would be I think I'll rent fine. one. Yeah, I rent just, one. Just to see what I, I'll do it and go, why would you ever use this? <laughs> well, because that's all we had. <laughs> yeah. We, we didn't but, have a I way mean, to see it. Why would you use this today? <laughs> well, there's some, you know, some of those that are more advanced that, that mm -hmm. measure color temperature. Yeah, you know, I think this one lighting. actually does. It, yeah, it does see, the a, whole spiel, you know. That's a specific, a good use for them that... Uh, that if you're trying to match lighting, you know, yeah. situations, I could totally see that. Anyway, yeah. so uh, pick one of those up. They're only four hundred bucks. Yeah, four hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, you get get two. That's why I said it's probably best to rent one. Yeah, well, and see what you probably. think. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, you know what time it is. Already. Yeah. Okay. So all that stuff you've got on your <laughs> screen, you're just gonna have to you have to save it till save next it week. Save it till next time. Because we have just we have just talked ourselves through another episode Ooh, of Cool Photo Tools. <laughs> so if you want to know uh, about the stuff we talk about, uh, go right to the coolphototools.com website, click on podcasts, and you'll see the latest episodes and you can find it right there, all the, uh, the links. And we appreciate if you're listening to us on the audio version on iTunes, if you give us a rating and a review. And if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, please uh, subscribe to the Cool Photo Tools channel. And also you can... Uh, Make a snarky comment down below that we'll delete later. And let us know what you bought that you think is cool. We'll no, I don't want to know that. I do. No, don't I'm listen kidding. to him. I'm yes. kidding. Yeah, that no, would be fun. Let us know what you've got. Come on, there's a bunch of you cool heads out there that, that are just lurking. That you think is really cool and you want to share with somebody. Yeah, if or if you're like a lot of people, you have really cool software and you don't want anybody to know about it because you don't want them to be able to do great yeah, pictures you know, too. Like, <laughs> yeah, because we'll, we'll out you, you know, right there. We'll be like, we found this and this is really cool. That's and right. your stuff will look professional <laughs> if you use this. And uh, yeah, so-and-so and -so doesn't want us to say, but we're saying anyway. So that's the kind of stuff we like. <laughs> Let us know what, what is making your photography more interesting. And thank and you fun. for listening to us and yes. watching us. Yes, thank but you. We we do appreciate. We do appreciate. You know, I, mean, it. I know it sounds like we don't care, but we do. We, we care. do. Yeah. We do. And Everybody, have a good week. Yeah. See you then. See you Monday. Bye. 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 You've been listening to the Cool Photo Tools podcast. Sign up for our mailing list at coolphototools.com. Got a question? Send an email or MP3 audio file to info at coolphototools.com. Thanks for listening. Yeah.